Hey guys, welcome to our channel Cat Solution. Today we will learn about the helical gear model in Creo software. Today I'll show you the two different ways to model the helical gear in Creo software. So let's get started. Go to the new file, take part, give any name to the file. I'm giving the name helical gear. Remember one thing, the space will not work here. You need to use instead underscore, underscore is allowed. Choose the template MLNS part solid. Okay. So our planes are height now. I'll turn it on. I'll start with the front plane. Sketch on a plane as per the drawing. I'll draw this profile that is of that 15 mm and this radius of 65 mm both sides. I'll take a center line here and then. I'll take the circle of the radius 100 dimensions are hidden from here I'll just turn it on give dimension 100 fit the plane I'll just hide the plane as of now then take a line command now as I have already added center line so it is taking the symmetricity uh, along the axis so I'll just click here to take the advantage of symmetricity option. I'll mention 15 here. This would be 85. I'll drag it out. Take R command, first point and second point on circle and just click anywhere. As of now we are not defining any dimensions. Edit the dimensions, 65 mm. I will mirror this R on another side line is mirror now I'll give the dimensions between these two points which is mentioned in the drawing 40 mm so that's it our teeth is created now I'll just trim the middle portion total number of teeth is uh, 6 here 360 divided by 6 will be uh, 60 degrees so the angle between center of the two teeth will be 60 degrees I need to mirror this profile along the circle so I'll take again a center line from here I'll give 30 degrees from here that's it select the profile to mirror I'll select these three entities mirror along this line it is mirror now Again, I will mirror these three entities along the vertical plane. Take center line. Mirror all the entities along horizontal plane. Mirror command, horizontal line. That's it. Trim the remaining lines. Trim the unwanted entities. Okay, our profile is now created. I'll simply do the copy of this entire sketch. Click OK. So our sketch is now ready. Again, I need to take two different sketches for the same. What we have mentioned here, sweep with three sketches, size 100%, 75%, 50%, the rotation angle of 15 degrees between each sketch. The plane for drawing the second section is at an offset of 45 mm from the first sketch. Our first sketch is on front plane, so I'll take another plane that is offset 45 degrees, then select that plane. We have already copied that first uh, sketch, so simply paste it here. Mention the scale size as 0.75. As it is 75% of the original and the angle of rotation will be 15 degrees. You can just simply drag it from here to here or else you can mention the coordinates here 0 and 0 etc. We need to get third sketch for that the plane for the third sketch is at an offset of 95 units from the first sketch. 
take another plane from the front plane, 95 mm. Select that plane and sketch. Again, paste under the copied sketch. Give a scale as 0.5, 50% of the original sketch. The angle of rotation was 30 degrees now. And I mentioned 0 here. Okay, so our, so our three sketches are ready now. Go to the sweep blend command. Go to the sections. I have already sketched the sections, so I will just select them. So using this option, and define with sketch is defined now. Insert for another one. Define sketch. Insert for another. That's it. RPF profile is now created here. I'll show you another option also. I'll just turn on the sketches. So what I'll do is I'll just select a sweep blend command. Select front sketch, second sketch, and third sketch. Click OK. Again, feel that openings, first opening. And feel the opening from back side. Simply click here. Okay. These three surfaces are now created. I'll select all the three surfaces. This one, this is one surface and this is another surface. I'll merge all the three surfaces. So it will be in one entity. Select this on merge and uh, click on solidify. So this will be convert into the solid entity. So this is how you can create uh, the profile as well. Well, if you can see here, here there's a little bit of bend we are observing. So for that, I need to edit the boundary blend option. So I'll just edit that one. I'll just go to the options, uh, influence curve, select the middle curve here and define the smoothness factor 0.5 for how much smoothness you require you can define or you can reduce or increase accordingly so i'll define 0.5 and click ok so now the curve is now smooth here this is how you can create that helical gear profile let me know in the comment section uh, which option do you find more easy and convenient right now the shaft portion I need to take the revolve command. So for the reference, I'll take front plane and revolve command. Shift and middle mouse button to adjust the sketch in the plane. I'll just simply sketch one outline. Please note that there should be no snapping between the lines as it is highlighting here uh, the equal lens. So I don't want that. It will create a problem while assigning the dimensions. You need to delete that line. That is not a big deal. We can do that also. So I have simply sketched one outline here. I'll define the center line. Without center line, the rotation command will not work. So better to define the center line from here only. This center line will not consider as a rotation of axis. So use this line only for the revolve command. I'll just simply close this cage. Okay, the area is highlighted with the red portion. It means this cage is now fully closed. So I'll start defining the dimensions. I need to define dimensions here 65 mm. Again, the dimension here would be 72 mm. Dimension here will be 76. Here, 78. And here, 90 mm. This dimension is 5 mm. This dimension is 32 mentioned in the drawing. So, what I'll do is we have a cutout, a circular cutout. For that, we will take a R command. So from the diameter of diameter of 72 mm, I'll start with that cutout. Take first point and another point on this side. And simply click OK. 
it should be tangent on at the vertical face or level trim the middle portion and it is not required define the dimensions whatever mentioned in the drawing this one is already mentioned this is over dimensioning we are doing so I'll convert this dimension as a reference one again dimension between this line to this line again this to this is mentioned uh, this is what to it is mentioned 158 this dimension is 112 this dimension already we have corrected this one is 80 ml now you can see 102 is already coming out suppose this diameter is not mentioned here so i'll as of now delete this one it is not mentioned considered okay so i'm giving it manually from this to this it is 32.5 so if i need to convert it into a diameter then i need to take precautions that you know, while giving the dimension you need to select the center line so i'll select center line and entity and click here it is now asking that uh, uh, dimensions are already highlighted i will delete this dimension Okay, I will simply click outside, exit from the command, just click on the dimension, you will find the diameter option. So that's it. This is how you can convert radius into the diameter. So our ribbon shaft is created now. Next we will go with the serrations here. So for the serration we will take uh, this face, go to the extrude command and for the reference we will take top plane. Uh, horizontal axis we already have and I will mention I will take the diameter as a reference so closed sketch view mode I will define the center line here take line command see uh, as I already have the center line then I have the benefit of that symmetricity option that it is already showing me the, the option for symmetricity. The line is symmetric along the center line. Uh, I'll project this circle. The dimension between this circle and this this line is 5 mm. Now trim the remaining circle. The sketch is now highlighted. It means it is uh, the sketch is not open, it is fully closed. Click OK. Mm, I want to extrude it in this direction. You can drag from here also or change the direction from here also. So for the dimensions, I will mention 80 minus 32 as for the drawing it is created now so I need to ro uh, revolve this command along the uh, circle and just turn on the axis from here so click on the extrude command you will find the pattern option here click on pattern select axis here choose the axis now I need 13 numbers gear 4 is already mentioned so I'll mention 13 and I don't know the dimensions between 2 serration to addition serration so I'll simply click on this option it will automatically take the uh, angle it will divide the angle between 360 degrees so now our serration is also created and this height the axis command so this is how our gear is created now so that's it for today if you need more help or more drawings for the practice and need any kind of support do consider to join our telegram channel and share the video with your friends thank you for watching